And John, we have not done squash yet. Until today, I feel really, really bad that we've taken this long to feature squash. But so happy that we have Sneha and Aaron with us today. And uh, you guys, thanks for joining us. How is it now that we're into phase two? What is life like personally and in terms of training? Um, I think, honestly, it's been a great relief. Like, I mean, a couple of, a year back, looking at phase two, you just still feel like you're being deprived. But um, now that we've been through like a two-month lockdown that continuously got extended by two weeks and four weeks, so it feels really good to have even the limited access that we have to courts and being able to socialize in groups of five and just meeting people. And yeah, slowly life is beginning to normalize, but you still have the masks that you always have to wear and everything. But yeah, I'm really grateful for phase two and yeah, contented with where it is right now. For yourself, Aaron? Yeah, I think it's great that we finally entered phase two and we can finally step into courts again. Uh, yeah, I've been really like itching to get back on court and yeah, this was a great relief, honestly. Just to even like hit the ball once was like so enlightening for me. But yeah, I guess getting to meet friends again in groups of five was also one of the greatest things because I really miss seeing my friends a lot. And yeah, but I think this circuit breaker and like this phase two thing has really been a great, uh, I think it's given me a good time to rest as well because the past few uh, years, actually one and a half years, I haven't really had a proper break. So this was like a good one or two months that I could like ease down and also in a way get back in my fitness to build on my weaknesses and you know, come back stronger now. Yeah. It's been a common right. theme, isn't it, John? Yeah, when it we is. ask athletes has been. What, what they get out of circuit breakers, they're traveling around, there's so many competitions yeah. in a year, they yeah. finally get a chance to just, just stay yeah. at home. Whether right? it's spending time with family or yeah. working on the fundamentals even of, of training and, and, and refocusing on, the, on that. I, I believe Shermaine mentioned that for, uh, for her chat with us. Yeah. And you guys being both very young, I believe you're 19, both of you? Uh, she's turning 20? Yeah. Yeah. I'm 19. Turning yeah. 20, she's 19. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could share with us how you first got into the sport mm. and was there any major influence in you picking it up and even going into the high performance route? Uh, for me, actually, it was a funny story because uh, my dad actually played tennis with his boss and one of the days it was raining so they played in the squash courts at his condo so that's how he started and then um, he brought me into it and I started with ultimate squasha under Sandra and Della when I was pretty young and at that point Sandra was the national head coach so yeah so from the age of six I started and then I got into the national team really early at 11 so I've been like in the national team for like eight years already so that's how it started, and that's how I started taking squash more seriously. And when I started um, at that age, my parents would enroll me in all sorts of classes, like swimming, dancing, singing. And slowly, slowly, as time went by, all the extracurriculars just died down, and squash became like the, the main extracurricular in my life, and yeah. it became even more than that, yeah. Was it always yes. squash for you, Aaron, or was there another sport? Actually, for me, I started off with swimming. So I swam at my club for until I was about seven years old. Then I turned to fencing. And I played, I did fencing for quite a bit actually for about four years. Wow. And yeah, I, I know like most of the fences now actually. Wow, yeah. interesting. And so actually I took a funny turn. So I went from all sports until I reached primary four and I joined choir. <laughs> <laughs> I joined choir and for, for two or three years. And then I was like this fat kid that went into a secondary school with like, uh, like zero fitness and then I was like why not try squash like for fun like my best friends were playing squash so I was like play with them so I saw it I was like wow I really lost a lot of weight in like six months playing so I was like why not try to take it seriously so I trained really really hard for like uh, six to six months to a year and then I got called for the national team trials so I just tried out for fun you know like no harm in trying and to my surprise I, I was accepted in and at first I re I declined it because I didn't really want like I wasn't sure if I was committed enough to take training every single day but like um, I think after two or two, three months of considering I finally decided to give it a shot and never looked back since yeah. Yeah, that's quite a rise that's quite a rise and yeah. uh, such a good story correct me if I'm wrong but I, I think I read uh, 
quite a while back that squash is one of the toughest sports to play in terms that you lose the most uh, sweat or, or body weight after yeah. playing. It's, it's the toughest sport to play. Um, what are some misconceptions about the sport? Like people yeah. watching it from the outside yeah. are just seeing, oh, it's pre pretty similar to tennis yeah. in a way. Or it's maybe like all the racket sports. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So what, yeah. what is some things that you, you can clear up right now for people watching about that they think about squash me, that may be wrong? I guess squash is unlike any other racket sport because it's it's not like two players on each side of the court. Like you're covering the whole court and you're sharing the court with the player. So it does involve a little bit more contact compared to like tennis or badminton where you're just uh, separated by a net. So it can get really tiring because you have to cover every corner and every angle and you twist and turn and it's it's known as a sport that burns the most calories in fact. So, yeah, during the circuit breaker, I found myself with so much energy because I was not, mm. like, you can't really, yeah. like, yeah. Um, like... Get rid of that energy, right? Yeah. Like, through like squash. Just, Pent just, up energy yeah, that you yeah. have. I couldn't really yeah. sleep yeah. I couldn't sleep either. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I really yeah. couldn't sleep a lot. Yeah. yeah, surprisingly, even though you're given more time to sleep and everything, but... It's just... Yeah, yeah I couldn't sleep. And I guess from an outsider's point of view, it looks like... Or the two players, like I just like some of them even look like they're walking on a the court. They're not even moving much, but uh, I mean, especially when you watch the pros, the pros are like they like gliding on the court. It looks so effortless. But if you actually think about it, they're taking like 60 to 100 lunges for two or three points, and you're playing more than like 100 points in in a match. So if you if you like consider everything, it's like a, it's like many 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 lunges and like fast movement, slow fast, slow fast, and it's like. It can really, really like get to your legs and like yeah, it's really, really exhausting. Which is why they call it like the, the sport that burns the most amount of calories. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So I think the the main takeaway we will take from this is not as easy as it looks. I think exactly. for people who who are watching it. Yeah, well, we did talk about how the pros always make things look simple, yeah. and actually, the more simple something looks, or the more easy something Correct. looks, regardless of sport yeah. uh, or technique. Uh, usually it means that it's actually a very high level of difficulty. It's, it's like I, I how, how, how easy everything. you make it look to be presenting <laughs> on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take, take that back home and have a think about that. <laughs> but anyway, well, uh, speaking of trainings mm. earlier, talking about in Circuit Breaker, maybe you can also share with us how training has been like over the last two months. Because, I mean, squash training, unlike other sports, I, I'm pretty sure has its own... A specific set of requirements yeah. and all that. Yeah. And we did see some videos of squash trainings happening yeah. during Circuit Breaker yeah. on our Wednesday report Correct. with people, uh, I don't know, with, were they national athletes as well? Yeah, or? they were at a car park. Yeah, they were at a car park. They were using the basically yeah. the, void the spaces yeah. just yeah. to be in touch and not, uh, not to lose touch uh, yeah. with the racket as well, as well. So what kind of trainings have you guys been doing that may have been a little bit different uh, from outside of Circuit Breaker in that sense? Uh, so for me, I kind of wanted to take that time to do exercises and things that I would not normally do when I had day-to-day -day squash training. So I focused a lot on yoga because I'm really inflexible. So I wanted to improve my flexibility. So yeah, I was doing like one hour of yoga in the mornings. And then in the evenings, I'd do like, like the HIIT workouts and the power workouts just to make sure the muscles are active and all the work we've put in in the gym doesn't go to waste. So, and eating well, because, yeah. So it was, yeah, a mix of those. And I'd run up and down my house staircase. Yeah. So it was like um, about 15 floors. I'll just go up and down wow. and do like five sets and skip. All, like different, different types of exercises. And yeah, I even went to like some car parks. I got kicked out by the security guard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just when you're just desperate, there's no other choice. And actually, um, at my house, there are squash courts. So I'd gone down trying to like sneak into one, but unfortunately they were locked and there was just like one yeah. red tape and the court was there and it was like two months already. It was Man, like, it was tough because most of us, like we don't even go for like two, two to three days without playing squash. Yeah. Like if we don't play for two yeah. days. That's, a, that's yeah. one thing like about squash is like, if you don't play for two to three days, you lose your touch. Yeah. Okay. Like, it, it, you lose the touch so rapidly, like that's why like players have to go for a hit almost every single day at max or one or two days without a hit. Yeah. So yeah, when we go overseas for tournaments, we fly, we straight away go for a hit, and then next day as well, there's only like room for one rest day usually for mm. the touch. Yeah.
New Milo Gao Xiu Dai Less Sugar with Whole Grain Cereal. Get the goodness of whole grains with more fiber and protein. The healthier breakfast choice. All right. So we've asked you to come prepared with a couple of uh, exercises specific to, to squash. Yeah. Uh, and we that. would like you to, to show it off. Yeah. Some of your home workouts or workouts you've been mm. doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who would uh, like you to start? Okay. Let me, let me try this time my hair off. Yeah. All right. So okay. Sneha's going to go first. I've got a prop as well. First got a time. Prop as a first, first time. time. We have a prop as well. And of course, this is only the second time we've had athletes in the studio. Yes. Previously, over the last. Almost two months. We've been yeah. doing it via Zoom. Yeah. So it's it's great. Okay. All right. Okay. So That's usually I would do it. this like I'll put it on the sofa. So this thing is this this thing is called ghost things. So we do we mimic court movements okay. as of like shadow boxing. You know, we just practice our ghosting movements on court. So yeah. usually we'll just put them over our body like that, and then she would do like ghosting movements like like uh, front so V's. Like just we're just pretending that like, this is the squash court. Okay. okay. And then this is the front corner, that's the back corner. Still so more. he'll hold it from the back, and then I'll just go in and I'll do a ghosting. That. So you're doing the squash movement there, yeah. hitting. Yeah, so it's just like practicing the movement. Okay. But we do it like much faster with like, with like, but I guess with the space constraint here. Yeah. And she's wearing jeans. Yeah, it's a bit tight, but. Yeah. So how uh, how long will this go on for? Thirty um, seconds or yeah. it will go like like sometimes we do like thirty seconds on, ten seconds off, then we do like thirty sets or okay. something. Wow. Yeah. How many sets? Yeah. 30, thirty sets. Thirty sets. Yes, yeah. thirty sets of thirty seconds on and ten seconds off. I thought I heard it wrongly at it first. Thirty nope. sets. You heard it right. Okay. Yeah. I don't even know if I can last yeah. like uh, one set. Five sets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly I mean, I one. So yeah. You yeah. can do five. One, one I set. do one. But there's like this really funny story behind this. Like a couple yeah. of years back. Uh, my coach had made me do this with. Well, it, was, it, was it was me. It was me. He was holding the band, and the band actually snapped while we and were it doing. <laughs> and and then after after it snapped, uh, the coach just said, "Okay, just hold the two ends of the band. It's fine." <laughs> and it snapped again. Uh, like it whipped me again. So. So she had two whip marks on yeah, her back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Too so much so force goodness. doing it. It was too just too force. strong for yeah. for, uh, yeah. for the band. Okay. Wow. Nice. This, this okay. Yeah. Yeah. Next exercise. So that's the first one. That's yeah. the first one. Okay. So first, we have squash players. We have to have like decent arm strength and okay. like chest strength for like the for forehand. So we do a lot of push-ups. And one of the the ones that um, my senior Mantong he he taught us was like this some, something called uh, bomb diver push-up. Bomb diver push-up. Bomb okay. diver push-up. So you you start in like a pike position. You go down. You go up. Up like that. You come back down. So you can make it like even harder. Like you can go up, plyo, up. Are you impressed by that, John? I am. I yes. am. <laughs> I'm just not. Mantong uh, is also the guy that does the, that does <laughs> the hip workouts for, yeah. for yeah. 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 So, yeah. Facebook. Yeah. So those are like have been really helpful as well. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we do those plyo push-ups. Okay. Plyo push-ups are basically like explosive push-ups that like you hop off the ground. So we combine it like a bomb diver, and you go to a plyo, then you come back up. Would you guys like to try it? <laughs> Would I like to try it? <laughs> both of you. <laughs> both of us. Both of us. So no, now both of us okay. have to do it. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so we'll, we'll we've, not, our, we've not even our, asked them the question. Yeah, we've not even asked. It's already, just it's gone already, straight it's already yep. it's straight it's gone into the challenge mode right okay, now. Okay, I'm down for it. Yeah. Bomb diver push-ups, John. Yeah. I think you, you'll, you'll do better than me then. No, I have no idea. I've never tried it before. Right. Shall we do it together? Yes. <laughs> yes, we shall. Shall we do it together? Yes. Yeah. No, 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 just me, you don't worry, you guys can do it with you guys, I can do it with you guys. I was like looking at me like, what are you doing to me, man? So let's do it together. Okay, so, so. Okay, we're gonna. I'll, 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 I'll check it. You, you cheer us from, I'll check the form. You check the form. There's enough space. Do we need to form like an angle or something? We can do an angle. We can do like, we just do an angle. Yeah. Good, we're gonna try. Okay. So we go, like to a pike. As high as possible. Like that, not as high as possible, but like a decent pike. Am I okay? And then you go down, like that. And then you go straight up. Now this is the hard part. You go back down. And then you go Ooh. up. And Whoa. then you do like 20 of those. How many? <laughs> 20. His face 20. is red. Yours are red. Good grief. You can try doing the plyo as well. Like uh, the no, hop it's okay. at the end. Thanks, thanks for that. <laughs> you can try that. <laughs> I think we're going to say we've not been working out for some time now. <laughs> It's like, Ooh. it's good because so it hits different parts of the muscles, different not just like muscles, normal push-ups. 
I thought, oh, you're, you're stopping, huh? Just, yeah, I'll just let you guys okay. do it. I, I don't know how many I am. I think He's I'm not gonna 18. Punish himself, I think I'm 18 right now, John. <laughs> what? No way, man. A bit lower, guys. <sighs> A bit lower. Pretty sure you're okay. only at like... <laughs> John, well done. Yeah, well done. Okay, okay last one, now. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Yeah, well, Ooh. the back is... Yeah. <sighs> done. Man, Good Sorry. job. Certainly worked the Ooh. body for that one. That's live TV for you right there. <sighs> How was it, guys? Did you enjoy that? Definitely. We should be doing more of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah completely exactly. honest. It works different muscle groups, not just like a normal push-up. Mm. Yeah, and when we're ready, maybe even uh, the explosive one, like you said, when right we're at ready, the end. Yeah. First, we need to complete 20 of when these. When we can even do yeah. yes. <laughs> Okay, it was great fun. I got a sweat on. Now it's your turn, and perhaps their turn to get a sweat on because it's time for squash. sport terminologies and with uh, squash players in the house, All we're right. gonna test you on four different squash terminologies and uh, we have a whiteboard there yeah, with uh, some markers you guys grab uh, one whiteboard each with the whiteboard markers and so <laughs> basically what's going to happen is each time duncan mentions the terminology a terminology yeah you, you can, guys can write down what you can uh, answer yeah okay. so in the past <laughs> just just uh, just to put it out there in the past like even in bowling or in floorball or in shooting, I've, I found all these terminologies from the internet. And they may be Americanized a little bit, mm. so it may be things that you've never heard of, but hey, we're just playing it for fun, all right? They call Don't it a real. A real. Don't share answers. Don't share. <laughs> Don't share answers. Okay, so the first squash terminology for you, John, and obviously for Aaron oh, yeah. and for Sneha, is um, the nick. Mm. What the is the nick the in nick. squash? Yeah. The what happens when the nick happens? When I have no idea. When something to do with points, you nick a point. Actually, that's a very good guess. You know that. But I'm wrong. You're, yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> you always do that. It's you always do that. It's a great that's a guess. Good, you good nick a guess, point, and then you said, "But it's wrong." Yes. And okay. So you 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 got your answers. Yeah. They both look like they know the answers. Yeah, I'm pretty to be sure honest. they do. Okay. I'm pretty sure they do. Asnia, you, you were the first one to complete it. So what okay. is your answer? So it's a winning shot that is hit into each of the front corners. Yeah. Ah, nice. Yes. So mine is yeah about the same. Hitting the ball in between the floor and the side wall. So yes. basically. It's like, the, imagine like two, two gaps like that, okay. and you hit the ball directly in there. Usually the ball just roll. Wow. So that's a winning shot because in squash, yeah. um, the ball can only bounce once. Yeah. Okay. But if the ball rolls, you pretty much win the rally yeah. as well. Okay. So it's, like, it's quite hard to hit that. Do you actually aim for that? You aim for that. Yeah. It's my favorite shot. And the pros, <laughs> the pros all aim for that. It's okay. like the fanciest. Shot. Fanciest you go shot. For. If you yeah. get it, if you, if you if you pull it off, then basically you win. Yeah. You win yeah. it. But you obviously win. it's the hardest shot it's because hardest. the hardest aim has to be like. And if you mess it up. Yeah. The ball is just going to bounce out and you're going to be in trouble. Oh, so yeah. It's, it's going to land it's a risky one. It's a high risky shot. shot. Oh, okay, so okay. there are some pros that don't even go for that shot. So okay. they're extremely safe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So well, depends on how much of a risk taker you are then, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah, and I like it that you learn something new and then they explain it as well. The pros here explain yeah. the actual meaning of it. Perfect way of learning on the, on the job. Yeah. You didn't get it right, that one right, by the way. I didn't get it right. Okay. Next one. We'll see. It's called Post. Not Up. Not <laughs> Up. <laughs> what does it mean? I, I, mm -hmm. I, I hope you've not heard this many times in your life, John. Not up. <laughs> um, but yes. What does it mean when it's not up? My goodness. It's a terrible... I have absolutely There are many no uh, different circumstances where this... Um, not up. Yeah, it could be very, very bad if you, if you hear it, that it's not up. I really have no idea for this one. Not up. Mm. Make a guess. Actually, I didn't realize how squash terminology would sound to a stranger. Yeah. Now when yeah. I think about it... Now when I think it, about it, it's like, they can't it's, even It's hard understand. to understand. Really even, yeah. For the other sports, I could actually guess. Not up. Just Nothing to do with the scoring for this one, right? No. Uh, we thought uh, he has guess, both. Uh, no. Huh? We thought he has both. <laughs> I really have no idea. No idea. No so idea. you're just going to... Yeah, I'm just going to... Blank it. You're not going to blank it this one. Blanket. No answer. Okay, Aaron? So it's when the ball bounces twice. And the ball is not good. Basically, it's down. Yeah. yeah so it's so not up. let's say someone plays a shot and the ball bounces twice. The referee will usually call it not up. Ah. That means the ball's double. You lose the point, yeah. basically. Okay. But why? Why up though? What's the not rationale up? for using up? Meaning? Uh, not up. the ball down, so it's not up, lah. 
<laughs> yeah, is that, is that why yeah, you... Yeah, so it's the same thing. So as long as you take it on the second bounce, it it's not up. It's yeah. not you up. always okay. have to take it on the first because yeah. obviously if you take it on the second, you have more time. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. yeah. So not up. But would it okay. be also be used in, in tennis, for example? Is it something that you would use in tennis or no? In tennis, you just call it down. All right. Yeah. yeah. They don't really have all these yeah. weird terminologies. And it becomes very obvious in tennis. In squash, actually... It's very hard It's very see. hard. Sometimes you can't even see the not up. Because so it's players very would, fast. Yeah, exactly. so players would disagree on whether the ball was up or not. Uh, yeah. Oh, sometimes, okay. sometimes play, uh, like let's say when people hit the nick especially, the balls, I told you it rolls, right? But sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it, it hits it like halfway and the ball bounces really quickly. So you can't really see whether the ball is double or not. And some of the players are hitting the ball at like 175 miles per hour. So it's really, really fast. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. You, you didn't get that one, right? Yeah, well, well, I mean, I've not got a single zero one. Zero right, for so, two. Huh? All right. What does it mean when you have a hot ball? Oh. Hot ball. Mm. Uh, uh, this one makes. I, I, I may be able to guess this one. Hot ball is. I reckon. When it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> when. When it's been hit many times. So that it it heats up. Pretty good, man. Is it? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, in in essence, correct. But I think they, they can explain it a little better, but in okay. essence, you're, you're, you're correct. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's actually correct. Perfectly yeah. right. The wow. thing is, when you, when, you, when you have a normal squash ball, it's like normal room temperature. Some, sometimes yeah. it's cold, and the ball isn't bouncy at all. Yeah. So it's like dead. It's like a dead ball. So when the ball is hot, basically, you, you hit it many times. The more you hit it, the harder you hit it, the ball gets warmer, actually. Yeah. It expands, and the ball bounces more. Okay. So usually tournaments, the, um, they will ask us to warm up the ball or have a warm up, and they'll make us hit the ball until the ball's decently warm, so we can have like a proper like standardized bounce for mm. the entire match. Yeah. So in this sense, uh, a hot ball means the ball's bouncy. Yeah. 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 Oh, I mean, you, you're right, but it just because it makes it bouncier. Yeah. That, that that's the yeah. interesting. Same answer or? Yeah, same answer. Just that an interesting thing is you don't always have to hit the ball to heat up the ball. Okay. So like. I do, I, I do coaching for some of the smaller kids and I make sure that I, I need like about 50 balls warm. So what I do is I heat the balls up in a microwave. What? <laughs> so like, I've never like, heard that before. Like, yeah, yeah. So Different like, definition so there. But, like but not that. the balls what? themselves. So I have like this um, hot pack kind of thing. Okay. It's pretty big. So I put it at the base of the ball basket. Yeah. So I'll put the hot pack in the microwave and I'll heat it up for like... 45 seconds this and then I'll put smart, it under honestly. all the balls so the, all the balls get heated up yeah. after a while See, wow. so you don't always work have to hit smart. the ball that's actually work. smart you might be <laughs> the hardest worker in the room <laughs> but I'm not the smartest yeah. worker in the room I know that is it, uh. <laughs> I got that I'll give it to you alright okay. yay at least I put one point on the board final one okay it's not like you or me on this show but what is a boast a boast what does it mean when a boast happens uh Nothing to do with bragging rights, I assume, since you said it's yep. uh, a boast. I got some good ones today. To yeah, you got yeah, some yeah, really, yeah. really good ones today, to be honest. It's a lot harder. Last week's one was... Uh, okay, last one, because you got it all right, lah, so you might think it's easy. A boast. A boast. <laughs> Something to do with winning, of course, isn't it? Being the winning athlete, winning player, winning team. No. No, nothing no. to do with no. that. No. Nothing. Sorry, no. Actually, uh, we should just ask him. It's a, it's a type of shot. It's a type of it's shot. It's a type of yeah. shot. Is it? So what could it be? So hard. A winning shot? No. no. Yeah, it's like a winning shot. You hit the shot, then you're like flexing, right? <laughs> <laughs> you also, uh, you also getting it on this. <laughs> I, knew, I knew there's something coming up like that. I didn't think twice about that one. Sounds tricky. Okay, what is a boast? A boast is basically you, you hit the side wall before you hit the, you hit the front wall. So usually in squash you 
hit normal drives, which are like, you just hit the, the front wall straight and then it travels back. Whereas, if you want to change the angle of the game and move your opponent, you hit the side wall. So you hit the side wall, it hits the front wall. The opponent has to run to the front in that sense. Or they have to change their angle of play. Because sometimes you can't really see your bows. You're hitting it from the back. So they have to like, they kind of like, misfooted in a sense. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I don't even know why what it's called a bows. What call it? Taxi. They call it a taxi. Like basically being wrong footed, going, not knowing where the ball is. Yeah. It's called a taxi. Yeah. It's called yeah. a taxi. Oh, that, that's taxi. another term actually. Another that's another, there's yeah. a good one. Wow, okay, so you're hitting the side wall yeah, before, instead before of hitting, hitting the front wall. Yeah, yeah, but the ball has to touch the front wall regardless. Yeah. yeah. So, so the side wall, be, front wall. Yeah. yeah. There could be two wall or three wall balls. So it could be like front wall, side wall, that's two wall. Yeah. Or it could be front wall, side. No, sorry. <laughs> side wall, front wall is two wall. Yeah. And then there's side wall, front wall, side wall. Three wall balls. Which is three wall balls. So yeah. it's like it hits all three corners basically. And there are even bows that go into the nick. Yeah. So they end on a nick. If you think about it, it, it can go into the nick. It flies in and it hits the nick and it rolls. In the, in the corner. We call that a roller. <laughs> that I've learned a lot on this episode. Yeah, I learned uh, tons. Learn tons, yeah. yeah. Learn and tons. and as, I'm happy that they explain it to us as well. Yeah. yeah. Because without this explanation, I mean, I, I, I don't know what. I'd, <laughs> I'd probably take like a million YouTube videos for me to learn all these terminologies. You could just ask me because I have the. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true as well. <laughs> Um, all right, thanks for, for being game uh, to take part in this uh, squash terminology challenge. Yeah. Um, just before we, we let you guys go, we just want to talk about um, you know, what has been your highlight so far in yeah. your young career. Still plenty to do, but so far, what has been the highlight for, for both of you? Mm, no. I, think, I think for me, for no doubt, would be um, I played in the World Juniors in uh, 2018 mm -hmm. and uh, I managed to get into the quarterfinals after being unseated. So I had gone into the tournament with no expectations mm -hmm. and I made two upsets. And yeah, that was, that was like a memorable tournament. And yeah, I played the best squash I've ever played there. And yeah, looking forward, it's mainly getting back and I'll actually be heading to college. Hopefully I'll be in the States. I'm supposed to go to the States, but um, with the current COVID-19 yeah. situation and visa situation, I don't know, it might either be online remote learning or it might be, be there in the fall. Oh, good luck yeah. with that. Thank you. Good luck with that. Aaron, for yourself? For myself, it was probably last year when I played um, in the Asian Junior Championships and I made top eight there. And it boosted my Asian ranking to number five. Yeah, so that was like from someone who started squash a bit late and like, you know, climbing up the rankings in Singapore. That was uh, a pretty big achievement for me. Then also like um, having to be a lot, uh, play a lot of my seniors to qualify for the SEA Games yeah. at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. That was also a pretty big achievement for me. Yeah, so I never really expected it because it was always been one of my dreams to play in the SEA Games. And I was like really, really, in, like, really happy to make it that last year, especially. Some so, very memorable yeah, definitely. moments. Um, not bad for a choir boy. Nothing yeah, wrong no. <laughs> for those who sing in the choir, by the way. I'm not so he is not alone. Well, yeah. just our, you, you, uh, well, because the previous episode, we did see Sidney Kuma yeah. admitting to the fact that he also was part yeah, of the choir. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I was part of the choir as well. Yeah, me, me too. I was well. kicked out. I was. But, <laughs> yeah. Oh, punishment for me, but that's yeah, yeah. different story. <laughs> <day>. <laughs> um, okay, so we, we want to talk about the, the, the pledge for Team Singapore, don't we? As that, well. That's right. Right now, Team Singapore needs your support. So yeah. what we need everyone to do, of course, is to head over to the Team Singapore Facebook page. You will see a pinned post right at the top. And all you need to do is to drop your comments there to pledge your support for Team Singapore. It has been a tough period for all of our athletes, particularly during COVID-19. So mm -hmm. every ounce of your support yeah. does matter. Yeah, all you need to do is just comment on that pinned uh, Facebook post on the Team Singapore page yep. and just show your support for the likes of Aaron and for Sneha and all of the Team Singapore athletes. That's right. All right, so we're not quite done on this episode. We still have Get Active with Milo. That's right, and for this episode of Get Active with Milo, we have Team Singapore pentathlete, mm -hmm. a.k.a. the one who pants a lot, Shemaine Tung. Enjoy this eight-minute workout. That's right.
Hi everyone, welcome on uh, welcome to today's segment of Get Active with Milo. I'm Shermaine, and for the first segment, we are going to go through core exercises. So it will be 30 seconds each of each exercise, and we're going to go through rounds. Okay, so the first one is date bark. So for date bark, okay, we're going to start in about 10 seconds. So for this, the important point is actually to bring your belly button towards your spine. Okay, so we are going to get ready in 3, 2, 1, and let's go. So focus on pulling your belly button towards your spine and your lower back should touch the floor and then bring alternate hands and legs to the back. So this is not about speed, this is more about controlling the movement. So by the end of this, you should feel your core shaking. That's a good sign. Okay, so about five more seconds more to go and we're going to transit into bicycle toe touches. Okay, so for this one, it's Touch and touch. So touch towards your toe. So if this is too difficult for you, you can actually rest it on the floor and just touch like this. So if you want something more challenging, you can lift both, uh, both legs up the floor and just touch your toes. So for this one, you're going slightly for more speed, but at the same time, control your core. Make sure it's not like forcing your body up and doing this. Okay, the next one, flutter kicks. So hands above your head and just kick. So make sure your toes are pointing forward and not up. So if you want something simpler, you can take your hands, rest it below your butt and just kick. If not for more difficulty, you can actually do this. So this really fires up your core. It's shaking, oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, next one will be ab hole. So ab hole, you're just holding it like that. Okay, so always try to engage your core. Don't let your back sink into the back. Don't let, don't let it round up. So just maintain straight back. Legs pointing towards the front. Okay, and the next one, we're actually going to flip over. Okay, about five more seconds more to go. In three, two, one, we are doing bear shoot throughs. So bear position, knees off the floor, and we're going to turn, touch your toes. Turn, touch your toes. So it's called bear shoot throughs because you're in you're constantly in a bear position, which is like that. But if if it's too difficult for you to balance, you can put your knees on the floor and you can just do this. Okay, next one is plank scorpion. So plank position and twist. And twist. So for this one, your legs don't have to touch the floor, but try to go as low as possible. So this really works and fires up your obliques as well. One of my favorite exercises to do. So for this one, make sure that your back is in a straight position, not like this or not like this. And next one, elbow plank hip drops. So drop your hips, turn, and drop it the other side. So same thing, keep your back straight. Don't arc or don't, sorry, don't arc or don't bring it up. So you can go faster if you want for this one. Five more seconds more to go. And last one, elbow plank hold. So you're just going to hold it here for 30 seconds. Always engage your abs at this position. Try not to let your back sink in like this, or don't arc it also. Maintain a neutral spine. Okay, we have about 10 more seconds to go. And good news is that we're going to repeat it another round. And in three, two, one, we're going to go back to the dead bark. Okay, hang in there. This is the last one. So your core might be shaking now, but always try to engage it. Bring it towards the back. Don't arc your back and do this. So push it towards the floor. Slow, controlled movements. 
Okay, and next one will be bicycle. <laughs> okay, aim for the legs. This is another variation of the bicycle crunches. So most of the bicycle crunches are like this. So I find that this one actually engages your core more because you're reaching forward all the way to your toes. Okay, so next one is flutter kicks. So go back down, kick. So I like this exercise because it replicates the swimming movement. So it helps me for my swim kicks as well. So for this one, we are going for small little kicks, not big ones, but small ones. The smaller they are, the harder it actually is. Okay, next one, ab hole. So same thing, hole here. If let's say it's too difficult, you can put your head on the floor and just lift it like that. If not, you can always challenge yourself, bring your shoulder blades up and hold. Ten more seconds. Ah, oh, you're shaking. Okay, next one is the bear shoot through. It's my favorite. Okay, let's go. So this one might need some practice before you actually can master the movements because it's not something you do on a daily basis. So just remember to start slow. Get comfortable with the movement, and then you can add in speed. Okay, next one, plank scorpion. So same thing, turn, engage your abs. So try to rotate as much as possible without touching the floor. Okay, hang in there, just three more seconds to go. And next one, hip drops. Same thing, side to side. So this exercise is actually very effective at burning, what they call it, like muffin tops, you know, or love handles. Okay, nice one. Five more seconds more to go. And last one, plank hole. So remember, engage your abs. Don't let it sink down. Just contract it, hold it there for another 15 more seconds to go. Nice one. Okay, keep it there, hold it there. In three, two, one, we are done. <laughs> okay, so that was for core. So thank you guys for joining me on this segment. So take care and I'll see you soon. And wow, Duncan, certainly a, a workout that makes you pant a lot. Yes, I knew you were going to come back with that. Well, I mean, predictable is what I am. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, uh, Shermaine, for that workout. And uh, we look forward to, to that on Mondays and on Fridays uh, on evenings with John and Duncan, those eight-minute workouts, Get Active with Milo. That's right. We're going to leave you at this point, but don't forget to tune in on this Wednesday at 9 p.m. Yeah. Because the Wednesday report is back. That's right. It's 9 p.m. on Get Active TV and One Play Sports. We will see you on Wednesday. Good night. See you then. <laughs>